Oh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn? Okay. And interviewing. All right, LinkedIn. Okay. You've got to have a profile, obviously. You can upload your resume, but when I write LinkedIn profiles, what you want at the top are taglines. Customer service. Um, uh, revenue and profit, because if you're in sales, that's what they're looking for. Uh, customer retention. And when I write a LinkedIn profile, I like to put the tagline at the top based on that person's experience and what they're looking for, okay? Let's say that you want to work in a warehouse <coughs> or your background is in warehousing. Okay. Let's say you want to work in a warehouse, so you would put stalker, uh, time management, Team cooperation. Uh, and Pacific. So, depending on what it is you're going for and you want to link to your profile, look at those job postings and see what the taglines are and what they're looking for because if you don't have the taglines on there, it's not, no one's going to be drawn to your site. I had a little gal the other day that I worked with, and she um, is uh, in production, and uh, she's an operations manager at a jewelry store, and she sees production. So this would be hers. Um, production, operations management, inventory, she's in charge of inventory, etc. Everything that would apply to her particular kind of work would go at the top of the taglines for your LinkedIn. Okay, uh, what else do you want me to cover? Anything? Interviewing. Interviewing? Mm -hmm. Want to talk about interviewing? When is the best time to uh, plan for an interview? When is the best time to prepare? And are the participants giving the answer? Huh? Okay, the best time to Interview is. This is going to surprise you. You never have one. Why wait to have an interview to get ready? You're already done, aren't you? How many people like interviewing? Nobody. One. You like it? Yeah, what's your secret? <laughs> now, um, the best time to get ready for when is when you don't have one. And uh, how many people in this room are in the interviewing process for work? Anybody? Okay, well, this is a good time. If you are interested at all, you can send me an email. It's on my card. I will send you some very, very basic interview questions that are asked all the time. And then what you want to do is write out answers to interviews because 
most people are visual learners. If you uh, get ready for an interview by just saying things out loud, you're not going to remember. But if you take those interview questions and write out your answers, you're going to be much better prepared than if you just kind of wing it and just say it out loud. You want to have a good elevator speech? Does anybody know what that is? When is that? Uh, it's when so say you have to really sell yourself in the time that you're in the elevator. That is going to be the first thing they're going to say. Tell me a little bit about yourself. So you want to have a good elevator speech or 15 second introduction. When, when they ask you, when you go to an interview, they say, well, let's start off the interview by you telling us a little bit about yourself. They don't care anything about your personal situation. All they care about is what you can do for them. So my suggestion is to write out an, an introduction based on what you're going for and then practice it. The problem is people say it five times and that's it. You need to say it 25 times. Because the minute you open your mouth in an interview, you're going to make an assumption within five minutes whether you're the person for the job. So when you have to really, really prepare for an interview, and there's some very, very important questions, for example, how many people in the room have ever been asked what are your weaknesses at an interview? Okay. You want to know how to answer that? I'm going to give you my idea. What are your weaknesses? I want you to create one weakness that you can tell them about. Don't ask choices, because if you do, you're going to get yourself all mixed up. So when they ask you what are your weaknesses, I want you to create one that you want to share with them. And the way you answer that question is you start it with either, well, I think in the past. Now, if somebody has had a lot of work experience, they might say early in my career, But this is what I would like to use in the past. Think of an inadequacy or something that you improved on. And then relate it to the position. But start out your answer with in the past. What does that imply if you started out with in the past? The job that you're going for. If you start that answer with early in my career, you got it nailed. Think of something maybe, let's say, uh, early in my career or when I started school when I was in college, when I started college, I had a really hard time with time management because I was on my own. I had to do everything. I had to make my own meals. I had to decide what I was going to study. I had to uh, decide my social life, and it was very difficult. But you know what I did? I got myself a day timer. And I uh, clocked, I scheduled everything I had to do. And now I can take on anything. I can take on a lot of responsibilities because I'm very well organized. But when I first started college or when my freshman year, I had a really, really hard time. But this is what I did to overcome it. This is what I did to be organized. And I can bring the same efficiency and the work organization to your company. So see how to handle that? The weakness question should be early in my career or in the past. Actually, I'm sorry, it should be in the past, not this. Because I'm old enough to have an early in my career. So this is the way. In the past, I. Or when I started college, I. And talk about that and talk about how you've overcome it. And now, you can do the job a lot better because you have uh, become more organized or something like that. Okay, I just want to share with you, uh, has anybody in the room ever heard of career connectors? Well, now you know. What I want you to do in your spare time is go online to the website and register. Career Connectors meets four times a month, once in Scottsdale, Glendale, Gilbert, and Peoria. At each meeting, they have a motivational speaker and companies that come and do presentations and will talk to you about possible job opportunities. And it's absolutely free. No charge at all. And uh, it's a good place to meet other people. It's a good place to find out what's out there. 
uh, for wonderful organization. I uh, do resonate with these at the stop show meeting. I was going out to Gilbert Hall, so I decided to wear red and tar. There are resume writers there that will look at your resume and critique it. If you go to Scottsdale, I'll be there. Um, and also, you will have an opportunity to learn about what's out there with these companies that are making presentations. <clears throat> if you go online and you register, you register one time, every Thursday, you will get a notice as to who the main speaker is, who the keynote speaker is, and what companies are gonna be there. It's a good opportunity to get out there. The dress is business casual. You have to dress up a little bit to go, but it's well worth it. So I urge every single one of you to go online and register. It's just another avenue, it's another place to go and meet people, it's another place to go and find out what jobs are available out there. Okay, any other questions? I don't know how much time I have now. You still have about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Success stories. Oh, success stories. Well, um, I like to think my, my clients are all successful. Some of them take a little bit longer than others. Uh, should I talk about mom? Sure, do that, okay. but also talk, also talk about the importance of them coming into an interview or on their resume with having their own success stories. Okay, all right. Um, preparation is really, really key when it comes, and Carrie just mentioned some things to me about your success stories. You know, prepare for your interview. Um, how many people in the room have ever taken a test before? Raise your hand if you've taken a test. Did you get ready the night before? Hope not. How many people have ever played on a sports team? Does coach call practice for a game the night before? No. How many have ever, <coughs> excuse me, been in a performance or been a musical artist or had some sort of a concert that they were performing in? You don't start practicing the night before, do you? The same thing with interview. You don't get ready the night before, you start now. <coughs> There's two things that will, <coughs> excuse me, impact the quality of your, your success. Number one, the quality of what you do. And number two, the quantity. <coughs> and I know once you get a good resume, the, um, the thing is to sit inside that computer all day long and trust resumes. That's what people do. The quantity is there because they're doing it for hours at a time, but the quality is not there. Eighty percent of jobs and positions are gotten by referral. So you have to get out there and talk to people. You've got to network. And I know networking is not a fun thing to do. A lot of people don't like it because it takes them out of their comfort zone. But once you get that good resume written, don't sit at that computer and post resumes all day long. Let's say you want to work for Amazon, it's hypothetical. So Amazon, you get on there and you post your resume. Make a list of everybody you know and see if anybody knows somebody at Amazon that can hand carry your resume in. Once they do that, you have a better chance of getting an interview because they know that person. So it's very, very important that you Put a list together of people that you know that can then carry your resume into an XYZ company because you don't know who knows who. I'll tell you a little story. <clears throat> I lived in Reno, Nevada for a few years in 1997, 1998. And I belonged to a group. Uh, at that time, the federal government had an organization called the Junior Training Partnership Act. And for those of us that were not computer proficient, this goes back to the 80s, I could take some classes and I learned how to use a computer. You have to remember, our generation was not raised on computers. Um, so I took the class, and one day I went into this office that they had provided for us, and I sat down at the computer and I said, you're gonna turn this thing on, whether you like it or not, you're gonna get from point A to point B. Well, I turned it on and I froze. I didn't know what to do because I couldn't remember from the class. Well, one of the guys came into the class, came into the office. His name was Jack Cook. So, let's put this on here. Okay. 
So Jack comes into the office. And I said, hey, Jack, you got to help me. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. He sat down with me. And we got to talking. And I said, well, how do you like living in Reno, Nevada? He said, well, we like it. But um, I took a job a couple of months ago, and it didn't work out. We did for a couple of months. We had the house up for sale. And I said, well, gee, that's too bad. I said, where are you thinking of moving? And he said, Los Angeles. Uh, San Francisco and Phoenix. And of course, I said, well, I'm from Phoenix. I said, yeah, what, what do you want to do? And he said, I'm in the insurance business. I sell insurance. So um, he didn't know it. But my brother-in-law was in the insurance business. And here I'm in Phoenix. How many people have ever heard of the six degrees of separation? You know what that is? Okay. This is it. I think I'm running out of juice here. Okay. So here's Jack. Okay. He talks to me. And I said, I've got to give you the name of my brother-in-law in Arizona. I said, this might be a good contact for you. I didn't say he will give you a job. I didn't say he might have a position opening. I said, maybe you should talk to them and find out what's going on in Phoenix. Because if you're gonna move there, you've gotta have some idea of what's going on in the insurance business. So he called, I called my brother-in-law Jerry. He said, have Jack talk to Bob. Okay, so, I didn't know, but he made an appointment and met with his, my brother-in-law's partner. So while they're sitting there talking, they hit it off just perfectly. Bob said, just a minute. He says, let me make a phone call. This is the truth. He called CNA Insurance. And he says, you're that position you have open? I think I have the right guy for you. So there it is. He got that job. Now, I was in Reno. I was from Phoenix, she didn't know who I knew. That's how networking works. He got lucky, didn't he? Now, let's, I'll tell you another story. Same situation. Okay, let's talk about the six, you know, I'm talking about the six degrees of separation. Uh, so here we are again. I'm in the office. I think I was a busybody, but I'm not. And, uh, Guy comes in the office and he's sweating bullets. You know, remember, I didn't know these people really well. We were just in this group together. His name was Mike Harris. So Mike comes in the office and the guy's sweating bullets and knows he me. I say, hey, Mike, what's going on? What's the matter? He says, I just got off the phone with a telephone interview. You know, through screening. And he was all upset about it. I said, oh, well, we're just making conversation. This was the company. ASM America. Guess where they were from? Anybody want to guess? Nobody knows? They're located here. He didn't know I knew somebody there. Now, how? what is the chance of something like that happen? But just through a conversation, I was, was able to network with him and tell me that he just got off the phone with a telephone interview with a company called ASM America in Phoenix. You're not gonna believe it. I knew somebody there. I remember we're in Nevada, conversation, I'm from Phoenix. I was able to help two people. So I knew somebody, this guy's name was Mike Brown. He was the traffic manager there. When I was in trucking, he gave me all of this freight. So I made a phone call to him. I said, hey Mike, I know somebody that's applying for the technical writing job, um, do me a favor. I didn't know this guy well enough to recommend him. I think that he's a great guy. I think you should consider him. This is what I said. Please go over to HR, my crowd, and tell them you know somebody that knows one of the candidates. That's all I said. Just go over to HR and tell them you know somebody that knows Somebody that's applied for the technical writing job. He got it. So 
once you have a good resume, make your networking list of people that you know. Because if they know somebody in a company that you're applying for, they can hand carry your resume in and recommend you, and your name goes on top of the pile. So that's where quality comes in. You want to send out resumes, which is fine, but don't spend your whole life sending out resumes. Talk to the people that are in your networking, in your group of friends, in your parents' friends, and the clubs that you belong to, former bosses, former employees that you've worked with. You have no idea who they might know, how they can help you. So that's just an added thing to, to go with your resume writing that you've got to network, you've got to talk to people that know you, see if they know anybody in the company that you want to work for. Because that's going to get you in the door sooner than applying online with the whole wide world. Because you're in competition with everybody, aren't you? But having that little edge of knowing somebody, maybe your parents might know somebody that knows somebody in a, in a company that you're interested in. You just don't know who knows who. And when you go to Career Connectors and are able to go to some of those meetings, talk to the people there. Don't just sit there. And try to get out there as much as you can because, as I said to you, 8% of jobs are got by referral of who you know. Well, another thing that you also want to do is go to career fairs, too. Get yourself out of the house. I know career fairs, yeah, there's a lot of people there. I don't know what to say. It's a good way to learn how to talk to people. And uh, you have no idea what's going on with these companies, where there could be a position there that could work for you. I'll tell you another story. Do I have time for another story? Okay. Um, at a group that I used to belong to, they used to have speakers. You guys have heard of Macayo's Restaurant, haven't you? Okay. Um, the guest speaker at one of these meetings, he was the purchasing manager of Macayo's. And he said to the whole group, if I ever go to a career fair, nobody talks to me. Why? They don't want to be on the server in a Mexican food restaurant. So they bypass him. Macayos has a sales department, they have an advertising department, they have a facilities managing department, they've got an operations department, they've got a purchasing department, a lot of positions available there, but people don't talk to them because they don't want to serve Mexican food. So when you go to these career fairs and you see companies that may or may not have a position, talk to them anyway. Get used to talking to people and selling yourself because you have no idea what these companies offer just by the name. So you really, really have to educate yourself when you're out there. And be proactive. Don't hide at home once you get that resume done. Get out there and network with people and talk to them. Let them know what you're looking for because in business, one hand washes the other. Is there anything else? How, much, how am I doing? Fine. We'll wrap it up whenever you want to. Okay. Uh, any questions on anything that we've talked about? Okay, all right. Um, I would recommend that if you can have a professional resume done, I would definitely recommend that because this is what I found. People try to write their own and they fuss with it and fuss with it and they're never really sure whether it's really, really good or not. I do the resume writers council of Arizona. I also do resumes, obviously. But if you can afford to have it done professionally, it saves you a lot of time, and time is money. Okay, any questions at all? I guess that's it. I hope I learned something. Most of them? The, yeah, he just said, no, so he just said to go over the PowerPoints. He said he posted all the PowerPoints. Like, oh, okay. yeah, so he just said go over the PowerPoints. Should we? I mean, like, I have to leave them class, and like, it's just the same stuff. Oh, for real? Yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, all right, we're going to use the 31st. Resume cover letter. Thank you for speaking. It was very good. Yeah, thank you. I just got a lot of mail.